about this team. I'm proud of our players, how we work, how we prepare, um, and how we play to win. You know, we, we've got a, a good group of guys that know, that know how to win. Swing and a miss, strike three. Deep to center field. This ball's crushed. Another beautiful night in the Charm City as we welcome you to Oriole Park at Camden Yards in Baltimore, Maryland. Astros have had really good weather here the last couple of road trips. Tonight, the middle game of a three-game set between the Astros and the Orioles. Astros victorious last night, 3-2 to two, to extend their winning streak to seven games. And hey, look at this. Yankees lost earlier today in Toronto, and with that loss, the Astros have the best record in Major League Baseball percentage points better than the L.A. Dodgers. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Todd Callis alongside Jeff Blum. Glad you could join us for a night of Astros baseball and Blummer last night. One of our early talking points was maybe the Astros would score a lot of runs with the struggles for this O's pitching staff. That hasn't happened this year. Yeah, if you go back to the last three or four games against the Orioles, they have not scored a ton of runs, but they're finding ways to win. Like A.J. just said, they find a way to win. But we're so accustomed to seeing big numbers on that scoreboard. One guy who has faced the Orioles plenty of times in his career makes his second Astros start. Yeah, and it was a pretty good act when he went out there that first time. Six no-hit innings in that Astros debut. And I was kind of curious beforehand, maybe he got a little bit of information, but now that he's had a week under his belt, working with the Astros front office, working with the coaching staff, trying to figure out what could actually make him better, although it would be tough to top what he did right there, but got heavy on that four-seam fastball. We'll have an opportunity to talk about that later during the broadcast, but I'll be real curious to see how he comes out here in his second start as an Astro. Aaron Sanchez and three relievers combining on it. No hitter for Jeff Luno and the Astros 12th no hitter in Houston Astros history for Sanchez a guy that was in the A at least with Toronto he knows this opposition well yeah he knows them well and he's got success against them also pitching well in this ballpark is going to go a long way for Aaron Sanchez also so pitching in some foreign territory in Minute Maid Park now he's comfortable in a place where he's had a lot of success so the Astros getting ready for the Baltimore Orioles tonight Sanchez on the mound against another Aaron Aaron Brooks when we come back Julia Morales will tell us how the Astros have done during this seven game winning streak getting contributions from a number of players. Baltimore, thank us for some Astros baseball. The Astros going for a series win after taking a win last night in game one. That's seven consecutive wins for these Houston Astros. They've won at least that many straight three times so far this season. Ten is the most. They've done that twice. We have seen this club play some really good baseball following the All-Star break. Not long after the All-Star break is when they really got it going. You're looking at the starters numbers since July 17th. They were on some kind of a historic ro roll right there with their 2-12 ERA and 17 and 1. That's the best in the majors offense. Really good too since August came around. How about averaging more than eight runs a game? So we've seen this team dominate in different ways. And then they get to Baltimore last night and they put up a good win, but this way they did it a little differently. It was a very tight ball game. They needed the back end of their bullpen. Ryan Presley, fresh off the IL, came through, striking out a couple, stranding two, handing the ball to Roberto Asuna, who got it done. So we found another way that this team can grab a win when they weren't getting a lot of offense like last night. So a good way to start this series, TK, as they get ready to hopefully take the series tonight. All right, we are underway with the first pitch from Aaron Brooks to George Springer a little bit low. As the Astros look to extend a seven game winning streak now owning the best record in all of baseball. George Springer takes a call and strike. Bill Welke will call the balls and strikes tonight. Aaron Brooks gets the start for the Baltimore Orioles tonight. Mestro saw him earlier this year in a different uniform. So they are familiar with him and they did a good job against him. George Springer one of those guys that jumped him for a home run. Brooks pitched against the Astros in Minute Maid Park April 6 wearing an Oakland A's uniform. So they face him as a 28 year old member of the Oakland A's now 29 years old with the Baltimore Orioles after he was let go back in July and the Orioles picked him up and moved him back into the rotation. Springer with a count of three and two. 
83 degrees at game time. Here's the lineup Aaron Brooks will face. You've got Springer at the top, followed by Jose Altuve. Nobody has more hits since the All-Star break than Altuve. Michael Brantley hits third. Same lineup as yesterday. May look familiar with the only exception, Martin Maldonado batting eighth and catching in place of Robinson Chirinos, who will probably get the start tomorrow with Justin Verlander going to the mound. Called third strike on the inside corner. Aaron Brooks starts this game with a strikeout. Doing a good job staying away and then with that two strike count coming inside on our MD Anderson strikes and you can see half that baseball cutting that inside corner to get the looking strikeout numbers on the season aren't all that impressive for Aaron Brooks the numbers against the Astros in his career are very similar with a 5.48 career ERA against the Astros. Here's Jose Altuve reaching out and fouling one away. Altuve batting 301 to start the night. A hit in every game in his career here in Baltimore, including one last night on the first pitch he saw. 19 game hitting streak at Camden Yards. Eighty three degrees at game time. Altuve around a bunt takes one down and away two and one. The shift is on and it's brought to you by Geico. Altuve we talked about it. When he is in swing mode usually it's to that pull side that's why the Orioles are playing that shift and of course we know that there are some ex Astros in that front office trying to employ some of the same ideas that the Astros employ with that shift being on and there you go. Ground ball to third. Chase Peterson makes the play. Altuve retired for the second out. Astros three and one this year against the Baltimore Orioles, but they have not exactly dominated the series in terms of run score. They haven't scored more than four runs in any of those four previous games against the Orioles. Winning last night, three to two. Here's Michael Brantley. Brantley starts the game 322, second in the American League in batting. Further, what you were talking before the game, only three runs per game for the Astros this year against the Orioles and hitting less than 200 against a staff that's been beat up by the rest of the league. And they're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark. It's really interesting how well they've pitched against the Houston Astros. Just three home runs in four games for Houston against the O's. And obviously, the new general manager, Mike Elias. Megdal coming over as well. Those guys want to beat everybody in the league, but in particular, I think they like to see the Orioles <laughs> play well and competitively against this Astros team. As Michael Brantley sends one on the line in the right field, cut off out there by Trey Mancini, but a two-out single for Michael Brantley. I feel like Michael sees the ball pretty good off of Aaron Brooks. Pitches on the outside corner, and then Michael does a good job of pulling the hands in in order to get the barrel to it. Hits it hard past Chris Davis. Got a bit of a late jump on it. So that'll bring up Alex Bregman. Bregman all smiles. Why not? He loves hitting here in this stadium, and he's got a five game hitting streak going right now. Bregman, a two out RBI in the first inning of last night's game, got the Astros on the board first. Spot's been good to Alex since the lineup shift with Carlos Correa being activated and Jordan Alvarez on the team now. Bregman's been in that four hole. He's batting 385 as a cleanup hitter. 
at 11.59 OPS. 2 0 the count. I still don't feel like we've actually seen Alex just light it up. You're right. Which is crazy considering how good his numbers are. They're outstanding. And there's a reason he's hitting in that four spot. AJ trusts him. Bregman drives one to left field. Back goes Santan there. This ball's gone. Home run number 28 for Alex Bregman. And the Astros, just like last night, on the board first, leading two to nothing. In the words of Alex Bregman, that is a decent start to this game. You'd love this quick strike offense. 2 0 count. They tried to bust him in and they left 91 miles an hour up over the plate. And a professional, very good professional hitter in Alex Bregman is not going to miss that. Taking advantage of that mistake and putting the Astros on the board. 28 home runs. <laughs> no squats on this celebration. As Jordan drives one deep to right field. Air Jordan now with direct flights to Europe. And it's 3 0 Astros. I think that baseball is going to end up in somebody's brisket sandwich. It almost knocked over Boots Barbecue out there in right field. We thought he would get to Utah Street. And he demolished the first pitch he saw from Aaron Brooks. Yeah, usually when you go to Utah Street, you're pulling it down the line. He goes to right center field, and my goodness. We saw him get beat with some fastballs up last night, but here, down and in, that is really looking like a happy spot for Jordan Alvarez. That is seriously right where Boots Barbecue is. Smash City in the Charm City. Mm. Blummer, two nights in a row, if you're the opposing pitcher, you're two outs. You're thinking, <laughs> all right, here we go, clean first inning, and both nights the Astros putting up a crooked number on you. Got away with one right there, too. Yep. They have the ability, whether it's a walk, base hit, they put pressure on you by having these intense at bats. And we talk about pitch counts all the time, and that was something that happened last night to Bundy. Thought he was going to be efficient, it ended up being a 30 plus pitch inning. Those are daggers when a pitcher gives up two out runs and the Astros have done it. Two nights in a row two in the first last night with two away and three in this game with Correa down in the count here one and two with two away. Carlos the one guy in this lineup that has not fared well against Aaron Brooks in his career one for nine against Brooks. Carlos had his seven game hitting streak snap last night. I haven't even opened up my stat cast yet. Is it pretty firm oh, on those? Man. I got to open class. it too. I'm still on the preview page. <laughs> I know, right? You're just getting settled in here, TK. I know. These guys make you look up stuff before the game's even a half inning old. Well, you went Brantley at 100.5. Alex is home run at 99.2. And then, of course, Jordan hit his at 110.6. Mm. Yeah, that's some thunder early on. Estimated distance? Uh, just a mild 442. Wow. Expected batting average of 990. <laughs> 15 <laughs> home runs, 45 runs batted in, in now his 45th major league game. Called third strike. Correa takes one at the knees, and that'll do it for the Astros, but a three spot. With some big swings, that four hole hitter for the Astros, Alex Bregman, set him off, and then it was answered by Jordan Alvarez, 3 0 early for the is the benefactor of that early lead. He will be starting his second game for the Houston Astros through six no hit innings last time in his debut. But here he will be making his 10th appearance at Camden Yards. Very good numbers with a 3.29 ERA in a ballpark that gives up a lot of long fly balls. He's been very good here. And he'll face an Orioles lineup that he has faced plenty of times in his career. Jonathan Villar leads off, followed by Trey Mancini. Anthony Santander is the left fielder. Renato Nunez DHs. Chase Peterson at third. Chance Cisco behind the plate. Chris Davis at first Hanser Alberto is in the eight hole and then Stevie Wilkerson rounds out 
your lineup for first year manager Brandon Hyde. First pitch of the night from Sanchez is a fastball that rides up high for ball one. We are the starting second baseman last night moved to short after Richie Martin was pinch hit for tonight he's the starting shortstop and fouls one away it's one and one. We are hit for the cycle against the Yankees to start the week on Monday. Orioles got swept by New York had an off day Thursday and then lost last night they're in a four game losing streak as they start play tonight. After the Astros series is over they will take on the Yankees again this time up in the Bronx beginning with a doubleheader on Monday. There's a strike on the outside corner two and two what are you watching for for Sanchez tonight. I want to see where he locates his fastball. Last time we saw him, the curveball and the changeup were very good. So I'm going to be curious to see of how effective those pitches are in back-to-back -back starts. Didn't get the chase on that one, but we saw him get the fastball over. The velocity was a little interesting to me last time out, just because I know he's been notorious for being a 95, 96 mile an hour guy with that sinker. But we saw 93, 94. The command was so good last time out. If he's able to duplicate that and come back out here and do the same thing, he should have another successful. Ball game. Back with Martin Maldonado again behind the plate. That was the battery for the combined no hitter in Sanchez's last start. Two pitches fouled away by VR. Jonathan coming in batting 267, slightly better as a left hand hitter. Leads the team in runs scored. Ball hit hard to right field and Reddick was way over towards center. He's going to have to play this one off the wall and VR gets into second base with a stand up double. First hit Aaron Sanchez allows as an Astro. Astro starting defense is presented by Xfinity. You saw Reddick in right field. George Springer in center. Michael Brantley in left. The infield the same as last night. Yuli Gurriel and Jose Altuve on the right side. Carlos Correa and Alex Bregman on the left side and Martin Maldonado makes his fifth start for the Astros. Houston is 4 0 in his previous four starts. Well, Aaron Sanchez's Astros no hitter is over. <laughs> Six innings plus his second start, he finally gives up a hit. Picks up a breaking ball strike at the top of the zone against Trey Mancini. Little check swing. That's going to be a fair ball. Maldonado checks the runner, makes the play. Mancini didn't mean to put that ball in play, and he's out number one. Talk about the analytics and the physics of baseball. It's still amazing to me that you could fire a baseball at a human with a wood bat. And something like that can happen where the ball just deadens out in front of home plate on a check swing. It's incredible. Nice play by Maldonado, making sure the runner did not get into third base. Here is Anthony Santander. Sanchez starts him off with a breaking ball for a strike. We saw Sanchez throw a lot of curveballs in that last start. Kind of changing that repertoire around a little bit from his days with the Toronto Blue Jays. Chopper towards the hole and Correa makes the play. No chance to throw out the runner. 
But Carlos kept the runner at second base, the lead runner, as that ball did not get to the outfield. Not much Carlos could do playing in that shift, moving to his right. Had to extend himself a little bit and was unable to make that throw back across his body. So two hits in the first inning for the Orioles. Here's Renato Nunez. Sanchez facing the Orioles for the 20th time in his career, making his 15th start against Baltimore. A start here at Camden Yards. Early on, he's had more traffic in this one inning than he had six innings of work in his Astros debut at Minute Maid Park. Up and in is 2 0. Oh. Sanchez in that start walked two hitters and also hit a batter, but he spread those out. Never had more than one runner on in any inning. And he's down in the count to the designated hitter, 3 0. Oh. A couple of those fastballs trying to get up in the zone, but he has fallen behind. Four pitch walk and the bases are loaded right after the Astros scored three in the top half. Double infield single and now a walk and Sanchez will face Chase Peterson with the bases loaded. Walks have been an issue in the career of Aaron Sanchez. Last three years, averaging close to five walks per nine innings. There's a strike. Peterson started in the left field last night, and he gets started at third base tonight. Misses up, few misses arm side so far for Aaron Sanchez. Popped in the left field, probably deep enough to score the run. The R is going to tag. Brantley will just make the throw to third. Orioles score their first run. It's now three to one. Smart play, and now Aaron Sanchez's job is just to limit the damage and get out of this inning. Yeah, this is where you want to slam the door. We mentioned the two out runs scored against the Orioles the last two nights. Now, with two outs, Chan Cisco bats with runners on first and second. Cisco coming in at 224 on the season, 24 year old catcher. Pitch borderline at the bottom part of the zone didn't get the benefit of the call. That's one he'd like to have a little more consistently called a strike as the game goes along. On the ground, Altuve is there, makes the play, and that'll do it for the Orioles. So Sanchez works through a bases loaded one out situation, allows one. It's 3 1 Houston. On ATT Sports, brought to you by Rooms to Go where you get great furniture prices and delivery is fast and easy. 
and by Champion Energy Services, the exclusive electricity provider for the Houston Astros. Back in Baltimore, Todd Callis, Jeff Blum, Julia Morales. Astros lead three to one as we head into the second inning. Astros trying to extend a winning streak that's currently seven games. They had a couple of 10 game winning streaks early in the season. And also trying to continue with the best record in all of baseball. Yuli Gurriel will lead things off. It'll be the seven, eight, nine hitters facing Aaron Brooks. Yuli first pitch swinging, pops one into center field. And that is gonna find open space. Trey Mancini coming in from right, Hunter Alberto going out from second. And neither player could make the play as Yuli will reach. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. San, San, I mean, sorry, Mancini coming in, Alberto. There was really no intent between either of those players to get out there and get underneath that fly ball. This one, Aaron Brooks felt like he had it out when that ball left the bat. Instead, he's working out of the stretch. Here's Martin Maldonado. Maldonado as an Astro, three for 14, including a home run. Overall in the year 226. Takes a strike. Yuli's first hit of the series went 0 for 4 last night. Now the Astros have four hits. Maldonado caught Sanchez last start. He became the tenth catcher in Astros history to catch a no hitter. And has really excelled behind the plate in the first four games with the Astros. Houston's only allowed five runs in his four starts. One, one pitch is a strike. Started the year with the Oakland A's, had a great first start against Boston, pitched six innings of two hit shutout baseballs, his first win since 2015. Then he ran into the Astros, his next start, it did not go as well, five innings, five runs. This ball cued towards the right side, a long run for Alberto, he makes the play. On the play, Guriel moves to second. Time now to look at our Chevy Stropole, a unique one tonight, to say the least, and we're getting a ton of responses. The battle begins for the Astro supremacy in our Stropole. If you don't know the background, every poll Jordan Alvarez is in, he wins. Every poll Nolan Ryan is in, he wins. So tonight, we just put their two names up there and let you go at it. At ATT Sportsnet SW. It's been pretty aggressive so far. I expect an uptick now that you've announced the Stropole. The fact that he hit Utah Street didn't hurt. I was going to say, now uh, he's electrified early on in this game. They garner a couple extra votes. It was 50 50 for a while. Nolan kind of edged ahead before game time. Nolan can't do anything to add to his legacy. His He's played his hand, and now Jordan <laughs> hits a home run his first time up. We'll see how the rest of the night goes. This ball is a base hit into right center field. That'll score a run. Josh Reddick. An RBI. It's now a four to one Astros lead. Reddick picks up RBI number 37 on the year. Josh has got to feel good about that. Still having RBI opportunities in that nine spot for the Houston Astros. Did a good job staying back on that change up and hit his own version of the shift buster, getting it past Alberto on the right side. Here we go. That lineup turns over to face Brooks for the second time. George Springer caught looking at a 3 2 pitch his first time up. Big swing and fouls under the upper deck. So the stroke pole, Nolan Ryan versus Jordan Alvarez. This is a few hours ago, uh, actually at 3 o'clock. And you can see it back then, it was 50 50. DB liked the pole. How do you not? I mean, it's set up perfectly right there. I mean, that goes to what you're talking about. It's, it's going to be a tough ball game between Jordan and Nolan. 
High fly ball right field. George got under it a bit. Mancini backs up on the edge of the track. Reddick's going to test Mancini here and try and advance to second. And he's in there with a head first slide. Josh getting into scoring position with two away. Good hustle by Josh. And maybe gave us an impromptu scouting report of how they feel about Trey Mancini. That'll bring up Jose Altuve. Altuve grounded out his first time up. By Josh Reddick. He saw the Trey Mancini was on the warning track, flat footed, really didn't get into that throw, and he took a chance. It was a good read. Reddick is always going to take 90 feet if he can. That is not a play a lot of runners will challenge with throw from right field to second base, not being a long one. 101 the count. Josh enjoys playing here. We mentioned how Altuve hits it. Camden Yards. Josh Reddick, a career 368 hitter, coming in, and 1,060 OPS in this ballpark, and he added that to that with a base hit his first time up. Altuve sends one high and deep to left field. Santander back. He's at the track. He's at the wall. Gone. Jose. Altuve, two-run home run, his 20th of the year. Altuve's third 20-home run season of his career, and the Astros lead it big. It's now six to one. I'm just glad these guys listened to us in the open, complaining about them only scoring enough to win ball games. Now they're coming out with a thunderous open to this second game of the three-game series in Baltimore. You've already got home runs from Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, and now Altuve getting in on the action with a big two-run home run with two outs. Elevated this one, and the trajectory allowed that to drift into the seats here at Camden Yards. A little bit better carry tonight than we saw last night. I'm with you. That ball is carrying much better. We thought Jordan hit one out that way last night that didn't carry very well. Yeah, I think he was pretty upset. That's why he hit that one out here to right field at 442 feet. Here's Michael Brantley. I like that. Alvarez, Bregman, Altuve. It's the Astros' form of ABBA hitting home runs <laughs> tonight. But you know, ABBA spells their name with two B's, so Brantley's got to get into the act to make it complete. That would be good. Next thing you're going to tell me, you're going to play Dancing Queen in the background. <laughs> Well played. Or if you start screaming Mama Mia next time he hits a home run, <laughs> I'm going I'm to have to stop you right there. If Bradley hits one and it spells ABBA, we have to <laughs> drop ABBA references out there. <laughs> Altuve, Bregman, Alvarez, three home runs in the first two innings. Altuve hit 24 two years ago. And then that was his MVP season, of course. And then he also hit 24 in 2016. And he gets to 20 for the third time in his career. Congrats to Jose Altuve. Brantley has reached 20 once in his career. That's his career high. He's sitting at 16 right now. Good chance he could set his career mark this season. Altuve only needs five more to get his career best in home runs. There's a ball in the center field. Brantley doesn't need a home run. He'll just take a multi hit game. His 46th of the season, best in the American League. The Astros' hits keep coming. That's a good multi hit game in the second inning. Yeah. I mean, you would imagine during this stretch, you probably see that a couple of times from Michael Brantley, but it's. 
even though we expect them to do it when they do end up doing what the Astros are doing as far as an offense right now it's still amazing to watch. Here's Alex Bregman. Two run home run his last time up he has 28 on the year. And fouls that first pitch away. Astros up to seven hits and six runs. Bregman is three shy of his career high, which he set last year with 31. Well, he's got a good start in this ball game. Took a high fastball out over the plate, drove it into the seats. Talked about how he's having a great year, but it just hasn't been that explosive consistency that we're so used to. But if that stare comes back and that swagger, you better watch out. <laughs> Stays alive on the 0-2 pitch. Another look at that swing on our matches from Supermo. Watch where his hands go across the front of his jersey. That is a great slot for those hands to get into and allows him to barrel that baseball up and finish extending through it to give it a little extra pop to get it into those seats. Astros scoring. Two more runs in this inning with two outs. Five of their six runs have crossed the plate with two outs. Now this inning extended after the hit by Michael Brantley. And Bregman sends one into center field. Wilkerson going back, diving attempt. That's down into the wall. Brantley will score easily. Bregman's thinking about three. He'll hold up at second base. Astros lead seven to one. Alex Bregman an RBI double. Here we go. Alex getting that swing going. Did a great job. He got on those legs to go out there and get that slider on the outside corner of the plate. Rough landing out there for Wilkerson as that baseball gets by him. And that's why Alex was possibly thinking three. But as soon as that ball gets to the wall, you know that Michael Brantley's going to score easy. Alex already with a home run and three runs batted in. We're in the second inning. A broke with a meeting with Aaron Brooks, who's up to 49 pitches here in the second. Now this inning started with that pop up. Not an easy play for either the second baseman or right fielder, but neither really got close to it. If that ball is caught, now all of a sudden you're looking at a completely different inning. Then George Springer's sack fly is actually the third out of the inning, and the Astros don't score any. Now those plays are always magnified when you're playing like the Baltimore Orioles are. And we've seen it. At least Julie and I have in 2013 14. I know that you've had some tough years with the Tampa Bay Rays when things are going bad those things have a tendency to happen. But they also have a tendency to hurt you. That's the real issue. Now with this lineup and it wasn't an extra out in terms of error but when you give them a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah. It's just not fair. Jordan already with a home run tonight. Ball gets away. Brantley advances to third. Or Bregman, excuse me, advances to third. Statcast AI powered by AWS shows you that sweet swing of Jordan Alvarez. Follow the green line, and you can see right there underneath the Boogs barbecue sign. 442 feet later, and Alex, all he could say was, ugh. There have been 104 home runs hit on the Utah Street prior to tonight. And I'm pretty sure that one's going to count. We'll have to get the official word from the Orioles PR staff. But if so, that one's going to be right behind Boog's barbecue out there in right center field. As it looked like that ball landed on Utah Street through the gate. It was called a balk. balk. Alex Bregman is going to walk home on a balk. 
It is eight to one Astros on a two out balk committed by Aaron Brooks. Manager Brandon Hyde's going to have to come out and have interrupt the conversation between Bill Welke and his pitcher Aaron Brooks. It has been a rough start to this ball game and then gives up a run. Hmm. Called by the third base umpire, I believe. Lance yeah, I'm not Bear. sure if they're calling this a set position. When he stopped, when he hesitated? Yep. Because mm. we've seen how the modified pitching delivery has not has not been that traditional. You step back with the left foot behind the rubber. We've seen pitchers kind of at that angle step back with their left foot almost in that set position. But I wonder if that is why it's rendered illegal because the runners on third base it can be deceiving the runner. Well that's a tough one for the Orioles they've already given up four runs in the inning now a fifth run on a balk with two outs and Aaron Brooks felt like that's the same delivery he's been using all night long. The 29 year old has to regroup now the bases are empty for Jordan Alvarez with a 2 1 count. He wants to find out what this count is I'm sure he's not 100 percent sure and he finds out from Bill Welke it's two and one. Oh, actually Bill Welke says one and one that last pitch did not count it's one and one. Yep. This ball fouled away now it's one and two. On the ground past the mound but in the shift the shortstop Jonathan BR makes the play Astros score five it is eight to one Houston. They are trying to take it back in 2019 having quite a season. On pace for another franchise record win total setting it last year here in Baltimore. When they won game number 103 in their 161st game of the year. They lost the season finale but at that point it didn't matter AJ had already wrapped things up and they had already set the franchise mark they weren't going to catch Boston for the number one seed. It's kind of an anticlimactic final day of the season the Astros were looking forward to the postseason at that point. But still ended up with 103 wins despite losing that final game in Camden Yards last year. Now Aaron Sanchez after a long wait. In the top half of the second inning has missed on the first three pitches to Chris Davis who has good numbers as you see against Sanchez. There's a strike. Seven eight and nine due up for the Orioles who scored one on Sanchez in the first inning on a couple of hits and a walk. And there's his second walk allowed. Scouting report is presented by your greater Houston Honda dealers. A little different repertoire last start, Blummer. Yeah, and I think we want to do four seamer right there when he's altered. Getting off that two seamer, you can watch him when he pitches. He's got a nice loose fluid arm. And if you add the two seam to that in his previous years with the Toronto Blue Jays, it's really created good sink, good arm side action. But he's really getting on the four seam fastball as an Astro. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Brent Strom preaches pitch up in the zone to set up some of your off speed stuff and to beat some of these uppercut swings. But it's going to be a work in progress for him to be, you know, to start to become accustomed to the philosophy of the Houston Astros because he's been pitching with that two seamer for so long. But you can still see with the four seamer, he still creates good arm side run. I was going to say, that's what kind of fooled us. We knew he threw. Yeah. More four seamers last start than two seamers. We, we thought he threw a few two seamers because just like that last pitch, he gets that down and in run to right hand hitters. But just watch the the fluidity of that arm. It's not it, it's not a rigid right arm. He really has a lot of whip, and I think that really encourages him too with that three. <laughs> just blew him up. Oh, Bregman can't make the play on a ground ball at the bat of Hanser Alberto. Well, Alberto will reach. The Orioles have the first two runners on here in the inning. Alberto, who is a wild swinger, has had a couple of pitchers' counts where he's found himself getting on base. Jam not hit very hard. Alex charge again, maybe trying to. I think he may have picked his head up. 
This would be a great look at it as he charges in, maybe trying to charge in and get the ball to second base to get that lead runner. But as he takes his eyes off the ball, it doesn't go where he was anticipating it. It ends up being an error. So a walk followed by an error. Now bring up Steve Wilkerson. Stevie Wilkerson, the center fielder. But again, that last pitch blew up Alberto. But traditionally, we watch Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. Their, their release point is on top of the baseball, pulling straight down, creating that backspin and the illusion of, of planing out, like we say, or riding up in the zone. Aaron Sanchez might be a little bit off to the side on release points, so when he spins it, it's maybe spinning from 2 o'clock to maybe 7 or 8 o'clock. And that's what creates that spin that kind of makes it tail towards the inside on a right handed hitter. Good meeting there for Martin Maldonado. As Sanchez has walked one and fallen behind to the number nine hitter. Now gets him swinging and missing at the changeup. It's one and one. Yeah, that was a good changeup from Aaron Sanchez. That was an effective pitch last time out against the Seattle Mariners. And here's that release from Aaron Sanchez on the fastball. See a little more on the side at this angle as opposed to Colin Verlander that are a little more north and south. That was a good example of what you talk about being whippy. That arm really. Whips through as he strikes out Stevie Wilkerson with more on Sanchez. Here's Julia. Hey, we're continuing the conversation uh, about Aaron Sanchez, his stuff, and then comparing it to some of the guys that are already on this Astros club. Garrett Cole, a guy that he's watched go through the transformation and become the guy he is now from afar with the Blue Jays. He was still in awe of what the pitchers were doing. You're looking at Garrett Cole's numbers with Pittsburgh there and that two seamer basically going completely away in that first year in an Astros uniform and never looking back and so we're we're going to watch Sanchez and this evolution for him as he is in this Astros uniform. He is so brand new to all of this too but now that he's going to have some bullpens to work with the pitching coaches and the staff and start to learn some more of the analytics it'll be interesting to see uh, what he looks like down the road. This is a guy that's that's already open to anything. He loves what Garrett Cole does now. He also said stylistically being able to watch and learn from just and Verlander and Garrett on a daily basis and just talk to these guys in the dugout which he's already done a lot of he's really looking forward to seeing who he can be I think you know very soon not by the end of the year I mean this guy's already ready to to put what has happened in the last couple of years with the injuries and all that behind him and be better than he has been before well Julia you were the one who kind of alerted us because we originally said all right he threw more four seams and two seams but he threw a few two seamers because we saw that down and in run to right handers were you surprised when he told you all he threw were four seamers from a guy who used to throw mostly sinkers I was especially you know you, you hear their comments before games these guys don't want to give it away either they don't want to tell you exactly what they're doing so they will tell you they're, they're looking to do a mix and they're going to continue to tell us it depends on the hitters but it was interesting to hear that he is really going to, to lean on that four seamer and get better at it too this is something like I said he's going to work on it in the bullpen so it will be interesting to see if it changes a little bit as far as the slot where it comes out of the hand. He looked great in that first start having a little more traffic here in his first two innings tonight that last ball was just foul picked up by Yuli Gurriel. But we said it before Aaron Sanchez first start with the Astros. This is a guy with a lot of intrigue around him. He's always been a guy that everybody loved his stuff. It was a matter of putting it all together. High draft pick high prospect. Had that great season where he led the American League in ERA just hasn't been able to repeat that kind of success in recent years. There's a four seamer up for a ball it's one and two. And I feel like we explained four seam versus two seamer a lot on our broadcast but for fans that 
may not be fully aware the two seamer is going to dive away and down from a left hand hitter and down and into a right hand hitter. Four seamer is going to play it out a little bit better and have that little extra ride especially if it's a Garrett Cole or Justin Verlander pitching. One and two the count to VR. Yeah the sinker doesn't or the two seamer which is the sinker does not rely on the spin. It relies on those seams actually catching and creating drag that makes that ball kind of fade away from a left handed hitter or in on a right handed hitter like TK is talking about. And as you describe with that clock reference because of his arm slot he does get a little bit of that natural two seam break even when he throws it with four seams. There's a breaking ball hit to Altuve high throw to Correa no chance for a double play Altuve frustrated with himself. He didn't give Carlos a chance to turn it, but still they get the lead runner, or excuse me, the runner at second. It'll be first and third with two outs. He lost his footing as he was making that jump turn to throw the ball to Carlos Correa. Watch the feet. That right foot gives out just a little bit, and when that backside loses it, it's much like the swing. The arm, all of a sudden, <laughs> you can't get on top of the baseball and you push it over to second base, but thank goodness he's got a ginormous shortstop. To be able to catch that ball and make sure they get the at least the lead out. Yeah, it's good Altuve was not throwing the ball to Altuve. That <laughs> yes. would not have worked out as well. First and third with two outs. Trey Mancini bats. And Blummer for a guy who played a lot of infield, these infields get watered down pretty heavily before a game. Yeah, it, that's the thing. Before the game, they soak these things pretty good so that they don't dry out throughout the course of the game. Creates issues with sliding, but at the same time, can also impact those cleats when the mud is packed in there when you lose your footing. <laughs> Two base looking at his feet right now as you talk about that. Two and oh the count. So Sanchez having to work this inning a walk and air. A potential double play ground ball the Astros were unable to turn. And he'll be at 42 pitches with this 2 0 delivery to Mancini. Three and zero. Sanchez had to work with the bases loaded in one out last inning. He got through that with one run allowed. You can see his pitch count a little bit elevated early on today. And he'll work with the bases loaded for the second consecutive inning. Now he'll face the. Number three hitter Anthony Santander. Santander reached on an infield hit his first time up. Here's a guy who was originally in the Indians organization. Baltimore got him as a rule five pick with a shoulder injury. In the minor leagues for the Indians and the Orioles had the ability to give him a shot. Getting into the 2017 season and now he's a. Rising star for them, 24 year old outfielder who might be somebody they can look to try and add pieces around as he takes one down low for a ball. It's 1 0. Santander batting 299 on the year, over 330 here at home. Big lead for Aaron Sanchez to work with, but he's struggled with his command tonight. He's walked three, including two this inning. Ground ball towards Yuli. He will flip it to Sanchez covering, and that'll do it for the Orioles in the second inning. A couple of walks in an error, and the Orioles strand three. It's 8-1 Houston. Gap will complete your next Minute Maid Park. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem special check-in offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark Go app today. A lot of Astros fans in Baltimore this weekend. Well represented. We can't always see them at the ballpark. That's the problem. So much orange. There's Astros orange. Carlos Correa leads things off and takes one inside for a ball. But down where we're staying, not far from the stadium, we've seen a lot of fans rolling through the streets of Baltimore wearing Astros gear. 
Correa struck out looking his first time up has a 2 0 count to start this inning. Aaron Brooks 54 pitches through two innings. Has allowed eight hits and eight runs. And he has started out Carlos with three out of the zone. Oh, check that. That's a strike. It's two and one. Correa high and deep to left field. Forget about it. That's it. The Astros bullpen. It's over the Astros bullpen. A monster shot by Carlos Correa hitting one to the statues here at Camden Yards his 16th home run of the year and the Astros lead it nine to one. Oh my. Show Rhea. He may have the only plaque out there that's 474 feet. That matches the longest one of the season with Jordan Alvarez. And all the talk about plaques over there on Utah Street. I'm not sure what's out there to left field. He about tried to knock down the Hyatt. There's a couple of statues out there for Orioles legends. Jim Palmer, Earl Weaver, Frank Robinson. So he gets a statue now? <laughs> 474 matches the longest home run in Astros history in the StatCast era. You see some of the statues out there. Cal Ripken Jr. He went to where the statues are. TK, that ball was nuked. I thought that was going into the Astros bullpen, which is a shot as Yuli in the center field. Wilkerson is going to make the play at his hip. So Yuli hit it a mere 395, but the guy before him hit it about 100 feet further. Yeah, do you even bench, bro? <laughs> this fastball is at the top of the zone also, and Carlos went up and got it. 91 miles an hour, and he immediately put his head down because he knew he crushed that baseball. I thought it was a lot of fun to watch the Astros bullpen scatter because they thought that was coming in hot and actually got over their heads. That's what wow. that's what fooled me. I saw the bullpen move and I'm thinking all right they're going to go try and catch this home run. So I thought man that is a shot it's going to actually land in the Astros bullpen. Yeah usually Brock Amane, the bullpen catcher out there will hang out and make the play but he was vacating. Because it's a little bit deceiving how much further the Astros bullpen is than the Orioles bullpen beyond the left center field fence. So he cleared both bullpens and up on the walkway out there. That is monumental, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> Maldonado down in the count 0 and 2. So we've seen the two longest Astros home runs in the StatCast era this year. Jordan Alvarez and now Carlos Correa. They both beat George Springer by a foot. Springer's home run last year in Minnesota was the record. That ball did not want to come down. A lot of smiles when you hit a ball that far. On two pitch, Maldonado fouls down the line. Well, the Orioles do have bullpen action going now. It's been a struggle, obviously, for Aaron Brooks, but we mentioned the Orioles just came off a series against the Yankees where they they used up their bullpen. Didn't have to use their bullpen too much last night, but then they have another game tomorrow in the afternoon against the Astros, and then they go play the Yankees again. Gosh. For the doubleheader Monday. So Brandon Hyde. Look, bro, Kale, they don't want to go through all these arms beginning in the second or third inning, but they might be forced to. Right now, Aaron Brooks just trying to figure out a way to get through the third inning. He's at 68 pitches. Counts two and two to Maldonado. High runs allowed for Aaron Brooks previously had allowed eight runs in Toronto back in 2015. And he 
comes back to strike out Maldonado. And it's strikeout number three for Brooks. Picked up a couple of strikeouts in the first inning, two away. Oh, Josh Reddick will bat for the second time. Reddick had an RBI single his first time up. On the ground to second. Alberto is there. Reddick retired, but the Astros add to their lead with a mammoth home run by Carlos Correa. Presented by Blue Cross Blue. We're going to take it back a few years. Astros first year in the American League, and they're visiting Camden Yards. That was Jonathan VR in 2013 with a straight steal of home. That was the left hander on the mound for the Orioles, Wei and Chen. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there goes VR. So we saw his athleticism there as he was a young prospect that played a lot of shortstop for the Astros back then. Jose Altuve that remembers that play and said, I was on second at the time and I didn't advance to third. Epic fail for Altuve, he said there. <laughs> but one of the better uh, memories, they would lose that game. That was also the game that Bud Norris was supposed to start. Guys, I know, Blummer, you probably remember this. He was scratched from the start and then he was traded the next day to the Orioles. So he just switched clubhouses. Yeah, we got LJ Hose. That's right. Memories. I got to think, Julia, that the dugout has been a fun place to be next to during this game. My favorite is when the guys don't even react to the home runs anymore. <laughs> like they're not even impressed. They had to be. Which one were they not <laughs> impressed with? It's funny. They just kind of after a couple, you know, they just sit and watch and they look at each other. <laughs> they go all. That just happened. They go Zach Granky on it. And they have to, yeah, right? This and is they, they have to get up. They have to go <laughs> high five everyone. Someone has to get ready to hug somebody. You know, a lot of work. We're doing some research, but we think Blummer that could be yeah. the longest home run in the history of the stadium. Yeah, we we've got to dig a little bit deeper, but everybody that we've asked has not seen one clear the bullpens in left center field. One and two the count to Renato Nunez. He hits one towards right field where Josh Reddick will make the play in front of the warning track for the first out of the third inning. So Sanchez retires the leadoff batter for the first time tonight. So we have this. We have the knowledge that it's the longest home run in the StatCast era at Camden Yards. So when you go that back before the StatCast era, a lot of those were projected distances based on the stadium, maps, all that good stuff. But if nobody else has cleared the bullpens, then I'm going to say give it to Carlos. Absolutely. Yeah. Ball fouled back by Jace Peterson. Place opened up in 92, I believe. So. He, it's not like he's setting a record in the stadium that's been around five or ten years. And of all the players that have come through, did Griffey hit? He actually has the only plaque All Star on, game on the All Star game, hitting one off the warehouse in right field. Yeah, during the Derby. So not a regular season, right? But a, but a bomb nonetheless. I mean, yeah, he hit the warehouse. There, there it go. is. Thanks, nice. fellas. He hit the warehouse, and there's 104 other medallions like that one. That were in regular season games that landed on the street. We are getting word that Jordan will not get a medallion because his ball actually hit the railing of the fence before it hit the street, and that is not that disqualifies that disqualifies you from getting a plaque on Utah Street. That is correct, TK. We actually sent our cameraman out there because it is it's a it's a whole thing, a very a very fun thing as someone comes out and marks the spot. There's someone with the Orioles. They permanent marker the little spot where they're going to put a medallion eventually but man, none of that happened. There's That's what happened. The fan showing you exactly where it full hit. reenactment but it bounced over that gate is what he was trying to show you. High fly ball left field Brantley eases back he'll have room his buddy George Springer is telling him he has room and that'll do it a one two three inning for Aaron Sanchez including a strikeout. Oh, it's good look at the moon and where Correa's balling it up. Yeah that was the impact zone. 
<laughs> left a crater. Beautiful shot of the moon on this Saturday night in Baltimore. Get your tickets for the August 21st game against the Tigers. Why? Because you guarantee yourself a Josh Reddick on base bobblehead. It's an all fan giveaway. You don't want to miss it. For more information or to get your tickets for the game, visit Astros.com slash promotions. Spider-Man. New pitcher for the Orioles as we head to the fourth inning. Astros knocking out Aaron Brooks, and now they turn to Steve Klein. This is the fifth stint for Brandon Klein with the Baltimore Orioles. Came back on the 3rd of August. Helped reinforce that bullpen. Throws pretty hard. Averaging 96 and a half miles an hour on his fastball. Also has a changeup and a slider. 29 strikeouts and 29 and two thirds innings pitched. As Brandon Klein is the new pitcher facing George Springer. First pitch swinging. Tapper towards third, and that is off the glove of Jace Peterson. Springer will reach. Orioles have not played a great night of defense, even though this might be their first error, and it is. So Jace Peterson out in the outfield yesterday here, charging in, trying to get that short hop, but about a half step too late. Catches him on the in between, and he hits off the heel. So again, if you're an Orioles pitcher, you never want to see this lineup get extra outs, especially this part of the lineup. Here's Jose Altuve hit a two-run home run his last time up. As the Astros saw Altuve hit his 20th home run of the season. Tuve in the second, Bregman and Alvarez in the first, and Correa in the third. Back to Jose Altuve's home run. Elevated quite a bit, but here at Camden Yards, it has plenty to get out. I don't know. Carlos looked pretty excited. I'm not sure I believe Julia saying these guys are bored with home runs. <laughs> That was not a home run swing. No, it was not a good 2 0 swing either. <laughs> Two and one the count. Altuve talking to himself a little bit. It is a 9 to 1 game. But Altuve never wants to waste swings on pitches like that. This one grounded towards short. Bobbled there. Flip to second one, and they're still able to turn the double play on Jose Altuve. There's two away in the fourth. Even with the bobble, Orioles able to turn it. So they make up for the error with a double play, and the bases are clear for Michael Brantley. Brantley's batted twice tonight with the bases empty. First inning after two outs. And the last time batted after the Jose Altuve home run. Two singles, two runs scored for Michael. And takes one down low. Both times he singled, it was with two outs, and both times he came around to score. Bregman drove them in both times with a home run and a double. Brantley on the ground, backhanded there by Chris Davis, and Brandon Klein gets through the fourth inning. Astros lead nine to one. Astros fan with a baseball. Before I had this job, I did what Julia did pre and post game host and jumped in during the game and kind of roamed around the stadium. Julia Moore down by. All the action near the dugouts, but I would roam around the stadium and I would always hang out there, do at least one hit, a series out there beyond the bullpen. Because you could talk to the bullpen guys and chat them up or whatever. Never even saw anything close to a baseball <laughs> out there. As Chris Davis leads things off here, and Aaron Sanchez is quickly ahead of him 0 2. But that fan somehow has the Carlos Correa home run baseball. They may need to get it from him because that. Yeah, they may want to put it in the Camden Yards Hall of Fame. Seriously. Sanchez has retired four in a row as he starts this inning. This is upstairs to Davis. It's one and two. Davis. 
Davis walked his first time up. Sanchez walking three batters in the first two innings seemed to correct it a little bit last inning throwing strikes including picking up his second strikeout. Tip caught by Maldonado. That's a strikeout for Aaron Sanchez. Three strikeouts in the game, one away in the fourth. Just went right after Chris Davis. You'll see the location on our MD Anderson strike zone right down the middle, but good movement to beat Chris Davis. And Sanchez had the bases loaded each of the first two innings and in another start. Where the Astros offense hadn't scored nine runs. We might be talking about Sanchez scuffling early, but he was able to work through those two innings, only allowing the one run, and now he's retired the last five. Well, what a luxury, too, with the offense putting up nine runs. And he can falter a little bit, doesn't have to panic, just needs to find a way to work out of some of those innings because the offense has put up so many runs for him. Bouncer Alberto reached on an error his first time up. Having a good year, coming in third in the league in batting, trailing just Michael Brantley and DJ LeMayhew. But hitting in the number eight spot tonight. He'll make contact somehow, even on pitches like that. Back to that strikeout pitch of Chris Davis. Tough to tell right there. That's that four seam fastball, but you could see the rotation of it. That tells you that he got on the side of it a little bit, and that's what makes that ball run. And I can understand why that pitch is being mislabeled at times. It's hard to, even if you're watching a game, unless you see the release point, it's hard to always tell four seamer. Versus two seamer, especially with a guy with the natural run of a Sanchez. This ball hit high in the air to center field, sending Springer back. George is there in front of the track and puts it away for out number two. Sanchez's last start has a lot of sinkers labeled by various outlets. And the only reason we know is because Julia went to the source and yep. found out. He said, I did not throw any two seamers last start. Here's Stevie Wilkerson. Yeah, it was hard to tell on that slow mo that we had because at the freeze frame, that arm is moving so fast that it's tough to slow down sometimes and be able to pick up the grip. But once he let it go, that's when it signaled to me that it was that four seam grip. Created the four seam rotation. It's fun to have another live arm who the Astros can kind of tinker with and see where they can kind of benefit him with his repertoire and how he attacks hitters. Two and one to count to Wilkerson. And again, we can call Aaron Sanchez a veteran. He's pitched four or five years in the big leagues. He's got enough time, racked up some innings, but how about him being willing? And wanting to come over to the Astros, see what they're doing, absorb the information, and hopefully use it to his advantage. Yeah, he is sponge like right now. Very excited to be on the same staff with some of the arms in the Astros dugout. Soaking in all the knowledge he can from a Wade Miley, a Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole, Zach Brinke. Three and two the count. To Wilkerson. There's Garrett. Won't see him in this series. Garrett will get the start in game two in Chicago. Wade opened up this road trip. He and Zach Brinke, the former Diamondbacks. On the ground foul. The 
Astros scoring nine runs in the first three innings tonight. They have scored nine runs or more in now five of their last seven games. Offense has just been unbelievable. That's why last night was so impressive with Dylan Bundy putting the wheels back on after two runs in the first and 55 pitches through two innings. And the Astros ended up scoring just three against him and the rest of their bullpen. Short hop. So Altuve has to make the throw, and that'll do it for the Orioles. Seven in a row sent down by Aaron Sanchez. Three home run hitters are due up for the Astros in the fifth. It'll be Bregman, it'll be Alvarez, and it'll be the record setter. Shutter box spotlight bolt. Alex Bregman, he likes hitting at this ballpark. August of 2016, he hit home run number two of his career right here at Camden Yards and then he hit home run number three in that same series in, in August 2016 right here at Camden Yards he did it with the chin strap back in the day that was a little more effective than the mustache that we've seen in years past but very comfortable hitting here at Camden Yards and some history in his own career. Greg's already got a couple of runs scored he's got three runs batted in. Home run and a double in the first two innings of this game. Now leading off the fifth inning for the Astros. Astros knocking out the starter Aaron Brooks after three innings, allowing a career high nine runs. Bregman takes a strike. Brandon Klein in the second inning of work. Run 74 runs batted in now. Four RBIs in this series. It's a place you used to like to hit. I don't really didn't play here all that much, to be honest no. with you. Spent a year and a half of my career in the American League. And that one year was with the Tampa Bay Rays where we came up here, but I didn't mind playing here, but I just don't remember absolutely going off and you know, nothing real memorable for me in Camden Yards. That ball's drilled to right field, sending Mancini back, and it's over his head and one hops over the wall. Double for Bregman. He already has two doubles and a home run. I think Bregman's going to wish he went for third on that last double because he would have had a great <laughs> shot of the cycle tonight. That double, he had no choice but to stop. Yeah, he might be hitting the ball too hard to go for the cycle. This ball is smoked going the other way, and again, the home run. To the pull side, the doubles going to left center and right center now. He's on balance. We might see a little momentum building for Alex Bregman in the middle part of this order for the Houston Astros. Here's Jordan. Swings the first pitch and pops a foul. Now yeah, Bregman getting hot. Is that the way everybody else is going. Well, great hustle by our crew when we saw where Jordan Alvarez home run landed just shy of Utah Street on that railing. She went out there and shot a little video of the fan reenacting where the ball hit. So Jordan does not get a medallion for a home run on the Utah Street. But if he pulls one a little more, that ball bounced all the way through Boog's barbecue. Bases. We're in the fifth inning. Three 
three and one. So you've got Jordan Alvarez, who has 15 home runs in 45 games with a 3 1 count. And on deck, you have the guy that just hit the longest home run in the history of the stadium. Good luck. And his career. Gray hit one early in his career, his rookie year, that was a bomb, almost 470 feet, but nothing like that. Well, I'm kind of anxious to see if this next pitch, how that goes. Klein throws hard. Alvarez probably sitting on the fastball. Changeup in a nine to one game. And you go ahead and put him on for the guy who just, like you said, hit the longest home run in Camden Yards history. Let's take a look back at this ball that Carlos Correa put every square inch of his body into. Elevated fastball, and he celebrated by launching it over the bullpen. There's a lot of tweets out there from locals who cover the Baltimore Orioles saying they have never seen a baseball hit that far at that part of the ballpark. Mm. Takes one down low. So let's look at the official StatCast era totals for the longest home runs ever hit at Camden Yards. Now StatCast has been around since 2015. Machado had the mark at 465. And this ball ripped up the middle. That's a base hit. That will score Bregman. Carlos Correa adds to the lead. It's a 10 to 1 Astros game. Correa with his second run batted in. He's now two for three. That ball was hit extremely hard too. So putting his mark here on Camden Yards by beating Manny Machado, shot by nine feet. Mm -hmm. well, the other ones before the Statcast era, obviously the Griffey Jr. one was in a derby, and I heard that was 465 feet. Crazy. That one wasn't longer than Correa. Yeah. Yuli to left field drives one towards Santander and it's off the wall. Jordan Alvarez is going to score. Correa will be held up. Astros now lead 11 to 1 on the double by Yuli Gurriel. It's turned into a laser show out here at Camden Yards. My goodness, a hanging slider out over the plate. Yuli getting that swing back in shape by barreling that one up and launching it off that left field wall. It's been a voluminous velocity day for the Houston Astros. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. There's Maldonado with a strike. I mean, we still have. What seven weeks and a day to go in the season, and I know the Astros are have a decent distance between themselves and the run scoring leaders in the American League. Red Sox, Yankees, Twins, all putting up big numbers. But the way this offense is going right now, I almost wouldn't be shocked if the Astros make a run at the top spot before it's all said and done. But here we go. Camden Yards first open in nine two. And this is where Carlos's ball landed. <laughs> but yeah, some big numbers on there. 145 home runs allowed at home, most in franchise history this season. It's a combination of the ballpark, maybe the pitching staff a little bit. But since 2017, they have allowed 395 home runs at home. Yep. Oof. More than the Reds at Great American Ballpark by almost more than 50. Infield in here with Josh Reddick batting. Reddick cues one towards third, and he won't get the run home. And there's two away in the inning. So after a double, a walk, a single, and a double, the runner is staying at second and third, and we're back to the top of the order. George Springer will bat for the fourth time tonight. He's officially 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. The other home run, the monster shot hit by Daryl Strawberry, we're told, was well up on the batter's eye in center field, and that one measured at 465. 
So every source we have gone to tonight says that the longest home runs ever hit here three different times strawberry before stat cast Griffey Jr. in the home run derby and then Manny Machado in the stat cast era were all nine feet shy of where Carlos Correa just put a ball that's never been seen before here in this ballpark diving attempt by Santander he's unable to come up with it Springer heading to second the Astros get two more runs 13 to one George drives in two more with a double fellows are getting greedy racking up the numbers against his Baltimore Oriole pitching staff Former, it seems like first of all I go ahead and analyze this right <laughs> it's another barrel of baseball is what it is just out of reach of another opponent I was just going to say it seems like whether it's Mancini just unable to get to Bregman's double if yes. it's this ball it's, the Orioles are just like a foot away from making these plays and the Astros just keep rolling. Yeah not only are they good they're getting I mean we can call it luck but luck is being well prepared to hit baseballs and that's what they've been able to go out there and do. And there's you know you hear the the cliche the pursuit of excellence these guys are in the pursuit of domination. Doing some crazy things at the plate lately. There's a strike to Altuve. They were averaging nine runs a game during their six-game winning streak before they got to Baltimore. That went down last night, scoring just three runs in their three-to-two win. But now that average jumps right back, very close to nine runs a game. As the Astros score 13 in this series, they were averaging eight runs a game, and that's with still five innings or four and a third innings left to bat in this one. Now Tube with a count of one and two. That ball is a backhand play down the line and a long throw to get out Tube for the final out of the fifth inning. Astros add four more. They have scored 13 halfway home. Club of Houston October 17th for the Houston Open ticket options include daily general admission tickets week long tickets and premium ticket packages proceeds from this year's tournament benefit the Astros Foundation to purchase ticket packages visit HoustonOpenGolf.com. Jake Marisnik enters the game didn't get a lot of chance to make warm up tosses he's telling Brock Amani to get off the field because he just made a wild warm up toss to him. Here's a lemon as Diaz at third base. The reason Jake didn't have much time to make any warm up tosses because he went out there and there was some confusion as to who was supposed to play where. He and Springer and Reddick were all kind of standing in the middle of the outfield, and finally AJ's like, You guys know the drill. Exactly. If Jake comes in the game, he goes to center field, everybody else goes to their appropriate spots, and we get to say that it's the Cupid shuffle. But Jake's such a nice guy, he didn't want to take it upon himself. He didn't want to get anywhere near George, did he? <laughs> so Jake's in. George goes to right. Reddick goes to left. And that means Michael Brantley gets the rest of the night off. Diaz in for Alex Bregman, who has the rest of the night off. There's Reddick in left. And Aaron Sanchez working with a 13 to 1 lead. Finds the top of the zone. It's 2 and 1 to Jonathan Villar. Aaron Sanchez with the Blue Jays this year. Had one game where the Blue Jays scored 10 runs when he was pitching in Chicago against the White Sox on May the 17th. That was his most run scored of support before tonight. Last game with the Astros and that no hitter. They scored nine runs for him and tonight. They're up to 13 as he breaks over a curveball for a called third strike. VR doesn't like the call, and he'll go down for the fourth strikeout for Sanchez. Guys, got a chance to ask Martin Maldonado, who's catching Aaron Sanchez for the second time. Didn't really know him before that first time when they worked together for the six no hit innings, but said he was really easy to work with. They had a good game plan going in, and of course, with the way Sanchez was throwing the ball that day, just 
made Martin's job easy back there. But Martin also said catching Sanchez reminded me a lot of catching Charlie Morton. I know we've talked a lot about that forcing fastball to fastball for him, but the curveball too uh, is what Maldi noticed out of that first start. And then of course just Maldi in general being so comfortable right now and not the way he was the first time when he was traded over in 2018 having to get to know a lot of these guys for the first time figure out what they like and how they work this time around he was really just getting to know a couple of guys including Aaron Sanchez but just so much easier this time around it's been a crazy couple weeks for Maldi but these two are definitely on the same page yeah, catching both of Sanchez starts and he's had to nurse him through a little bit today with some command issues the first two innings but now he seems a little more locked in. That's good. Can't catch a no hitter every time you're out there with a guy. <laughs> and now all of a sudden Sanchez has recorded nine consecutive outs on the Orioles. He's retired the last nine. There's two away in the fifth back to back strikeouts. Yeah, he's starting to get on that curveball. It's time to play. Name that Astro brought to you by Nissan. Make sure you go to at ATT Sportsnet SW. And who am I? Five seasons in Baltimore, six time All Star on my left. I think you got an idea. But if you know who that Astro is, make sure you go to add ATT Sportsnet SW and let us know who you think that Astro is, presented by Nissan. Ball in the dirt. Anthony Santander is the batter. So you're seeing Sanchez use that breaking ball a little more this time around. Well, he threw three straight right there to Mancini to strike him out. And he almost felt like we, we had a shot of uh, Maldonado as Julie was talking about him. And Maldonado, you can see him screaming at Aaron Sanchez, maybe something to motivate him a little bit. And then he kind of put the two fingers down, like, let's go, let's throw the breaking ball. And he got the, sw the foul tip on the first strike to Mancini. And then he proceeded to go with two more curveballs for the strikeout. Falling behind here, 2 0. Oh. But a real opportunity in a 13 to 1 game to go out there and maybe tinker a little bit, like we were talking about. Here's a line drive. That'll be a fair ball down the right field line. Santander heading to second. Springer will get the ball back in. A two out double for Anthony Santander. That might have been the change up. Just pulled it a little bit. Just the third hit allowed by Sanchez and the first since the third batter of the game when Santander had an infield hit. He has two of the three hits against the Astros. Here's Renato Nunez. Nunez has walked and flied out to right. This for the new guys in the Astros rotation. Aaron Sanchez last start, of course, a no-hitter, but had nine runs of support. Zach Greinke in his first start as an Astro gets the win, even though he gave up five runs. Astros won that game 11 to six. Tonight, Sanchez has 13 runs of support. That is an average in three starts for the new guys of 11 runs per game. <laughs> Plenty of game left, TK. Welcome to the Astros. Yeah. Zach Greinke. Said he was looking forward to watching this team. He didn't realize how bored he was going to get. <laughs> Nunez with a count of one and one. So the three starts by that guy to your right and the guy on the mound now as a Houston Astro, the offense just saying, Here we go, guys. Well, if you add, I mean, the home run totals for the Astros, can we add? The three home runs of Zach Ranky into the mix now since he's an Astro. <laughs> we still have on the schedule two more games in a National League stadium. That will be in Milwaukee. I'm not sure how the rotation will line up for that, but it would be nice to see Zach swing the bat as an Astro this year before the World Series. Yes. 
if he wasn't so valuable to that rotation, you might give him an A-B in a game like this. I'm kidding. I'm not <laughs> sure they would actually do that. We talk about position players pitching. What if the position player came in and faced Zach Cranky? That does not feel good at all. Renato Nunez down after that foul ball. It's the 3-2 count. Mm. Off that end step. Yep. Speaking of Zach Granke and his thoughts on the Astros, it's kind of boring. Reminds me of being back when I was in Milwaukee. It seemed like they scored something like 10 runs a game. This might be a little bit truer to the 10 runs a game with the Astros. Yeah, if they scored 10 runs a game in Milwaukee, or it seemed like it's not well, as much as they scored. And he actually underestimated. <laughs> right. According to you, because it's been the average of 11, 11 runs. 11 runs a game. <laughs> Zach will get to start Monday against the White Sox in Chicago. That'll be his next Astros outing. Nunez trying to walk it off. Right now, Aaron Sanchez is at 89 pitches. Normally, AJ. Will get him out before 100. When I say normally, just based on what he has seen as a Blue Jay, AJ last start got him out at 92. So far, Sanchez has gone 100 or more pitches four times this year, and once the highest total was 104. So he's probably nearing the end of his night. We'll see if he gets the next inning, but right now he's trying to finish off the fifth. 3 2 count, Nunez back in there. I think he goes back in there with that arm side run. Yep. Swing and a miss. Gets him at the bottom of the zone. That'll do it for the Orioles. Sanchez strikes out three in the inning. Now has six in the game. Got a big box. July 19. Setting the Astro mark in the stack cast era at 474 feet, going well into the upper tank at Minute Maid Park. And then today, Carlos Correa's turn to put himself alongside Air Jordan. Show Rea knocking that ball out of Camden Yards at a record distance of 474 feet, also. There they are. Nineteen ninety two Camden Yards open Jake Marisnik deep to center field and Jake one hops against the fence for a leadoff double Astros hitting rockets all over the place tonight. No player does more is presented by H.E.B. Jordan Alvarez has an OPS this season of 1,116. Second in Major League history for players age 22 or younger. Only one other player in his age 22 season had a higher OPS with a minimum of 150 at bats. Teddy Ballgame, Ted Williams. Here's a lead Miss Diaz. Both Jake Marisnik and Aled Miss Diaz batting for the first time tonight. Jake almost hit one out to straightaway center. Diaz pops one up, foul, and just like everything else that's gone the Astros' way, that is one <laughs> row deep. And a George Springer rainbow jersey is looking for that foul ball. Some loud contact tonight from the Astros. Yeah. I think there's been 15 baseballs hit at 100 miles an hour or more off the bat, maybe four. There goes a line drive to single, or single to left. Pettis is not going to challenge anybody right now in a 13 to 1 game, so Jake gets over to third. Aledmus has himself a hit to join the hit parade. And Brandon Hyde comes out of the dugout to make a pitching change. Ted Williams, age 22 in the 1941 season. How about these numbers? We comped him with Jordan Alvarez at the age 22 season. Teddy with a 406 average at age 22. 37 bombs, 120 runs batted in. 
and 135 runs scored. He will bat against the new pitcher when we come back. The right hander wearing the number three is pitched in, will be pitching in his 10th game. He's made a couple of starts this season. He has nine strikeouts, 10 walks, coming into a tough situation with a 14.29 ERA. First batter he will face is Jordan Alvarez. He and Ted Williams, the highest OPS in Major League history at age 22 or younger. Jordan already has a home run that hit the railing in front of Utah Street. He also grounded out, drew a walk, scored two runs, has driven in a run, and now he bats with first and third, nobody out in the sixth Six. inning. You're compared to Ted Williams, life is good. <laughs> Arguably the best hitter ever. Maybe calling him Roy Don before the season's over. Because he right now is certainly a lead candidate despite only being in the big leagues for two months in a day. He's a lead candidate for American League Rookie of the Year. Did you just hear what happened on that swing? He fouled it off. The entire stadium went, ooh. This is a visiting ballpark. On the ground towards first. They make the play to second for one, and the return throw gets a double play, so that will be no RBI for Jordan. Run does score. It's now 14 to 1 as Jake crosses the plate. And now the record setter steps to the plate, Carlos Correa. In case you're just joining us, Camden Yards opened in 1992, playing in his 28th season. Nobody's hit a ball further than the guy at the plate, Carlos Correa. And not only did he hit a ball further than anybody else in the history of the stadium, he eclipsed the record by nine feet. Yeah, he wanted to leave no doubt about it. The legend of the Correa home run will live on here in Baltimore. I'm sorry I went silent right there, but I was just going to enjoy the ride. Ooh. Carlos on an 0 2 pitch fouls went off his front leg and he's down at the plate. Yeah, he's got that shin guard on, but it looks like he got off the top of the foot. Mm -mm. And it did. Hopefully it caught the outside. It was more of a glancing blow. He's going to walk this thing off. Maybe have a chat with Yuli on deck. Let him know how the little piggy's doing. Because I don't think that got Holka. <laughs> Maybe it did. Jake said, I did your spot in the lineup proud, Michael. Yeah, he did. That spot in the lineup has three hits and three runs tonight. Brantley with two and two, and Jake with a double and a run scored. Now one and two to Correa. That's a lot of baseball in 28 seasons here to own a record by that margin. And there's been some sluggers that have come through here too. This ball on the ground. I mean, the Yankees had 43 home runs this year by themselves in 10 games. That'll do it. Astros add to the lead. It's now 14 to 1. Play is presented by uh, Aaron Sanchez. His second start as an Astro is in the books. Five innings of work today. His first one, though, definitely memorable. As he was a part of history for the Houston Astros. Top six innings and a combined no hitter. You're looking at Garrett Cole. But this is the dugout as things were about to close out. Devo on the mound trying to get the last three outs in that combined no hitter. Garrett Cole wanted everyone to stick around. Why are people leaving? He was very excited for his teammates, as they all were. 
started to build a little bit as the game went on as they were very excited just a team thing as far as you hear these guys talk a lot about a good offensive night or what a great job the starter did but in that case it really felt like a team pitching night for this group and they had a lot of fun didn't really know where to celebrate how to celebrate who to hug first as there were four pitchers involved in that not a lot of those guys had been a part of it but an overall really cool night for these guys Garrett Cole reacting to it you saw it how he erected on the field but afterwards just giving credit to some of the relievers who don't usually get a lot of credit guys talking about the guys who finished up the game for that but just all around a really really fun night to be a Houston Astro. Have so many cool memories in the Sanchez debut. He follows that up with a five inning one run game tonight. He's now left the game Hector Rondon is on in the sixth inning. Love that video of Garrett Cole telling the fans hey <laughs> might want to stick around. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything, but you might witness history. Just pay attention to the scoreboard, y'all. Don't necessarily have to beat the traffic tonight. Hector Rondon takes over in the sixth. Pitched a clean inning back on the sixth against the Seattle Mariners through 13 pitches. The ball up the middle. Jace Peterson has himself his first hit of the night. Peterson's driven in the lone run for the Orioles with a sacrifice fly is now one for two. And Aaron Sanchez in five innings went out there and showed some pretty good pitching keeping the Astros in this game. He only gave up one earned run but you can see the vapor trails behind the fastball. The breaking ball was very good for him. Did a great job in throwing three in a row to trade Mancini before striking him out. Tough to back up an appearance that you had where you went out there and threw no hit baseball, but still did a great job working against the lineup he's had success against in the past. Yeah, only three hits allowed tonight in five innings. He did walk three in the first two innings. I'm sure he'd like to clean that up a little bit, but at one point he retired nine in a row and ended up retiring 10 of the last 11 batters he faced. Here's Chan Cisco. So now in two starts Aaron Sanchez has gone 11 innings for the Astros and allowed just three hits. Two and two to Cisco, who has flied out deep to left and also grounded out. Last time Sanchez faced the Orioles on July 3rd as a member of the Blue Jays, I was up in Toronto, went five innings of three hit baseball on that one as well. He allowed two more runs that night, tonight allowing the one run. Scoring 14 for the second time in three games. Scored 14 to close out a perfect 5 0 homestand. Got a couple of games this year where they've scored 15 runs, most recently on June the 14th. Also scored 15 against the Rangers on May 12th. That's the season high. Astros still have three at bats to try and break that mark. Ground ball towards Yuli. Short hops, goes to second. They get the fours there. Correa throws a strike to Hector Rondon for the double play. The amusing part is Yuli had to go down for cover. He had to duck out of the way of that laser. Good job by Rondon receiving it too. But a heck of a job on the backhand. It didn't really create an easy angle. We made a great feed to Carlos. I like that first baseman look by Rondo. Yeah, I'm not sure if he meant to catch that or was or was protecting his face. Here's Yuli. That was a seed. He's like, get me out of this firing lane. <laughs> And if Correa's arm is just on a different level. 
That was actually a changeup at 86.6. Mm. Still firm, but quite firm. Chris Davis a walk and a strikeout. Davis did not start last night against the left-hander Wade Miley. Came on as a pinch hitter, had a couple of at bats, and the Astros able to get him to strike out, and then he lined out to Altuve to end the game. No fines, no suspensions internally for Chris Davis after a little. Dugout incident with his manager Brandon Hyde to end that Yankees series. This ball hit well in the center field. Jake on the move, and he won't be able to get there. Bounces to Reddick. Reddick has a shot at second base, and Davis is safe on a tag attempt by Correa. That had to stir up a wide range of emotions for a guy who's been struggling and Chris Davis actually gets on this one in that opposite field gap. Then he had to sweat Jake Marisnik possibly taking it away from him. And then Josh Reddick came up firing and made the play close at second base. Good adjustment in that slide going to the outside and barely getting the fingertips on there. We're going to take a look at this one. Okay. It looks safe to me on that replay, but maybe there's another angle. Orioles fans are not happy at all with AJ Hinch for reviewing this one. I think the scoreboard might be coming into play on this. Yeah, I've got his hand on the base there, then the tag. Valiant effort all the way around from Jake to Josh to Carlos. Does that change your mind at all? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That one looked a little better for the Astros. I hope they're right, because you would hate for them to review this one and not get it overturned in a 14 to 1 game. If it gets overturned, Chris Davis is going to yell at another manager in this ballpark. <laughs> if it's overturned, it would be a single either way, and then I'll try to stretch it to a double. I'm sure AJ is hoping for a quick review. And we have a relatively fast review and see. Now bring up Hanser Alberto. Alberto has reached on an error and flied out to center field. That ball in the right center field pretty well hit back goes Springer he'll make a nice running catch in front of his buddy Jake Parisnik to end the inning. George Springer a little glove work in right field and earlier it was Yuli saying get out of the way the missile coming in from Correa. The game summary is the Demontron Auto Group and it's speaking of being driven. Baseballs have been flying out of Camden Yards and the Astros have been in launch mode. Air your Don trying to ruin barbecue out there in right center field. Altuve getting in on the mince with his own two run home run. And the biggest one of the night yet to come off the bat of Carlos Correa as he leaned on a high fastball and set a stadium record at Camden, Camden Yards. 474 feet later, his name is going to go down in Baltimore history. Mm. Correa hitting one to the monuments in left center field above both bullpens for the longest home run in a stadium that's been around since 1992. Here's Yuli. Yuli had the difficult task of following up that 474 foot record setting home run. And then he lined one in the center field and was out on a line drive. This one is lined in the left and it'll be over the head of the left fielder Santander. And Yuli gets into second base, his second double of the night. He is now three for four. 
got league leaders are presented to you by Houston Methodist. Some more great numbers by the Houston Astros. This one actually jumped off the page for me because offensive war, the Astros are at 114.5. The Yankees and Twins, we talk about the Twins being able to hit the home run, but the Astros being that far ahead of the second place New York Yankees in that offensive war, pretty impressive. On base percentage, slugging, what this lineup is able to do consistently puts them well ahead of everybody else. WRC plus also leading weights. Weighted runs created plus fan graphs having the Astros on top. So while they're not leading overall in runs scored, they could certainly close the gap as the season goes along. And right now, fan graphs likes that offense as much as anybody in baseball. Martin Maldonado needs to join the act. He has an 0 for 3 night going. Everybody else has a base hit, including the two guys that have joined this game halfway through. Martin is three for 17 since joining the Astros. But on the other side of the baseball, he has a chance to go to 5 and 0 as a starting catcher with the Astros. And in those five games, so far, Houston pitching's allowed six runs. That's a good catching ERA. That is brilliant. And Martin has always. Oh, look out. That ball hit his bat, and he's going to be out. Ball. He's going to be out on a ground ball on a pitch that went over his head. I'm just glad he's okay. He's going to be disappointed at the result, but my gosh, I'm glad he's okay. At least he can smile about it. Good for him. How did that ball stay fair? How did that ball not hit him? Anybody else in this lineup that's a base hit or a foul ball? But yeah. for Martin. And you know what? To your point, TK, as we watch the replay, that is dangerous, and I'm not sure. Just a tough launch angle. That bounce spot in foul territory and went forward, so it makes it even that much more incredible. Mm. But when you have these blowout type games, it always feels like there's one guy in the lineup that doesn't really get to join the party. But he did, the baseball gods didn't need to drive home the point with this play. No, that was not fair. That is absolutely not fair. And how's the ball not, how's hit, it not him? hit him? Yeah. Oh man. So that I equate that to the unfair nature of the ball called on Aaron Brooks earlier in this game. Yeah. When a guy was it's struggling, a guy struggling, Brooks was struggling. He gave up seven to that point and felt like he went through his normal motion. And Alex Bregman scored on a two-out balk from third. Kind of pile on. Reddick, who. Never likes to give away any at bats, frustrated with himself for that ground out. Yuli will get over to third base now with two away. Watch the Astros on the go all season long. Download the ATT Sportsnet app from iTunes or Google Play or go to ATTSportsnet.com to stream from your computer. Log in with your cable account and you're all set. Available to cable accounts with ATT Sportsnet in their subscription, subject to blackouts and territorial restrictions. Ely's already scored two runs tonight. One of them came home on George Springer's double in the fifth inning. George has a chance to drive him in again with two outs. George is one for three tonight with a sack fly and an arm and a two RBI double. Find command of those pitches if you're Taylor Scott. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Taylor Scott threw a lot this week, pitched in two games against the Yankees Tuesday and Wednesday. Got through 25 pitches on Tuesday, 22 more pitches on Wednesday. They had the off day Thursday, and Scott did not pitch yesterday, but now he's back into the mid 20s again. He's at 23. Now 24 pitches, so 
three out of five days he has had a little bit of extensive work out of the pen. Joe Smith's ready to come in for the Astros. He's been warming up. George keeps fouling pitches away. And this one will be into the stands. George with three RBIs tonight. Altuve with two RBIs. Bregman with three RBIs. Correa with two. Alvarez and Gurriel have added one each. That adds up to 12 of the 14 runs. Another run came home on a balk. And another run came home on a double play. Bregman's night is over. And a walk to Springer will bring up Jose Altuve for the fifth time. Altuve has both of his runs batted in on a two run home run. He's one for four tonight. The rest have been ground outs other than the home run. What's crazy about this 14 run game? They could have scored more. But the Astros have left just one man on base in this game. 15 to 1 on the RBI single by Altuve. They've stranded one runner all night and scored 15 runs. Yeah, that's a little bit of feast or famine as far as the runners in scoring position situations. But right now, if you're standing at home plate, you're in scoring position. <laughs> talking about with Yuli with a butt. Here's Jake. Obviously just having fun. Astros matching their season high with 15 runs. Third time this year they have scored 15. Jake doubled his first time up. He was the first batter to face Taylor Scott. Doubled on the first pitch he saw. Scott does struggle with the strike zone at times. He has the lowest strike percentage of any of the Orioles relievers. Claimed off waivers from Seattle back in June and made his Orioles debut on July the 13th. There's a line drive, base hit. Springer around third. He is going to score. The Astros set a new season mark with 16 runs. Jake Marisnik an RBI single. It is 16 to 1. The theme of tonight's ball game is get yours. Here's a let miss Diaz. These guys are taking greed to the extreme. We talk about in some of these blowouts to not give away the at bats, and the Astros have done a very good job in these situations to not give away at bats. They have maximized every single opportunity and every single mistake. Eight for 14 with runners in scoring position. And nine, nine for 15. 15. <laughs> Bases will be loaded for a guy who is in the stroke pole against Nolan Ryan. What are the odds this sets up the way it is right now at this point in the game? This is unreal. Our stroke pole, which is getting more votes than any stroke pole in the history of stroke poles, was simply the two best ever at winning stroke poles, Jordan Alvarez and Nolan Ryan. In the stroke pole era. In the stroke pole era. <laughs> The immovable force. It was just, it was this, the undefeated Nolan Ryan against the undefeated Jordan Alvarez. And I know Jordan lost a nickname one. Jordan did not win to Jake from Rake Farm. But in all the ones where it was Jordan skills, right now it's Nolan winning 51 to 49 percent. This is a quite a battle in our stroke pole. And Jordan's batting with the bases loaded. 
Do you realize if he hits a four runner? We're going to get in to 20. I realize that. And I know it's preseason for the NFL, but my gosh, <laughs> Texans would like this offense. Jordan batted last time up with first and third and grounded it to a double play. High, deep, four. Get about it. Four more on the board. We're no longer calling you Jordan. You are Roydon. R O Y. Could be the rookie of the year. 20 to 1 Astros. Unbelievable. I think even Baltimore Oriole fans are now standing up. Some are leaving, but some are cheering for the Houston Astros and your dog. 20 runs. This is an Astros team that had struggled to score runs against the Orioles this year. Had averaged three runs a game in their first four games against the Orioles, and they are unleashing tonight. Jordan now up to 16 home runs and 49 runs batted in in his 45th major league game. Goes up yeah, and we in. need that needs to stop. I know it's not intentional, but you've got to be able to find command because the, you're the Astros. Understand that you're a contending team and baseballs are flying. This is the second time it's put a hitter on their back. I feel bad for this guy up on the mound, Scott. He is pretty, yeah. he's pretty much gassed at this point. He, he's gassed. And I get that, and I'm not saying this is intentional. This is just a professional courtesy not to be throwing at hitters. He is pitching for the third time in five games. They've all been extended outings, and he's now up to 40 pitches. I should say third time in four games, three times in five days. And now it's two and two. 2015, last time the Astros scored 20 or more, Correa goes down swinging, but Blummer. They still have only left one runner on base and they've scored 20 runs. That man right there has 49 RBIs, which is two more than Ted Williams in 45 games. <laughs> we'll have more numbers as the night goes along. Right now, we're going to head back to our Rooms to Go Lounge, back to Houston. Now it's time for T Mobile's Through the Game. Some news and notes around Major League Baseball. Gary Sanchez activated from the IL with that groin injury, getting back into the lineup. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. going on the IL with the left quad, and Steve Ciszek also on the IL with that left hip. And the New York Mets showing a little miracle magic. Seven game winning streak, 20 and 6 since the All Star break. How about that? They are right back in the mix for a playoff spot. How did that happen? It was a big trade deadline. Mm -hmm. Picked up Stroman, didn't trade any of their guys. They thought they might trade. Alex Bregman's had the rest of the night off since being lifted after his third at bat. He ended up with a home run and two doubles tonight. Jordan Alvarez has stolen the show, though, with two home runs, including his first career grand slam. Astros lead 20 to 1 and have only stranded one runner. And now, bottom half of the seventh inning, Joe Smith takes over. Tough to comprehend what's going on offensively, but Joe Smith will come out here and make his 10th appearance of the season in relief of Aaron Sanchez and Hector Rondon. Great numbers to start out the season after coming off the IL with that Achilles injury. Joe Smith allowed his first earned run of the season last night, giving up a home run to Stevie Wilkerson. He will face Wilkerson here. Chance to get a little redemption. Wilkerson in the top of the order, VR and Mancini. The place is still buzzing about what the Astros have done tonight. A lot of Astros fans here have witnessed some things that you don't see in a long time. Saw last time the Astros scored 20 or more it was in the 2015 season. 
but Jordan Alvarez putting up RBI totals in his first 45 games that are pretty much unprecedented. Yeah, I've got a good buddy. You've heard me talk about him. His name is Ryan Spader, but he's on Twitter at Ace of Spader. He's big on the numbers, written a couple of books, and I may have to write another one called just the Jordan effect. <laughs> but he uh, is at the ball game today, and he sent me a text after Jordan hit that home run for his 49th RBIs on the season. And through 45 games, the 49 RBIs are the most ever through 45 games. Passing Ted Williams, who had 47. The history of the game. History. Jordan had the most ever through 30 games, and now he just set the mark for 45 games. Yeah. I'm gonna let that soak in. And I think we're to the point. Too, you know, you've watched enough baseball, and, and, and seen. You've been around the game. Whatever. All of us, all the fans out there too, but to understand what he has done, and it's not a short amount of time anymore. He's getting closer to he's closer to 200 at bats than he has 100 at bats. So that's a substantial amount of time to be in the big leagues and do some damage. Chopper on the ground when Joe Smith's going well, he gets ground ball outs. Let's let the fans enjoy this. Yeah, it's thunderous. That was a big one. That was a little bit lower launch angle, but still a very high exit velocity for Jordan. He's impressing his peers, and that's probably the most remarkable thing. But this one right here, 112.5 off the bat for a launch angle at 38 degrees. You lower that maybe seven, eight degrees, it's off that warehouse out there. 38 degrees? Yes. 407 feet estimated on that grand slam. I'm going to go get a plastic disc and put one out there, just right Jordan out there. Because yeah. he deserves one based on those two home runs. Yeah. He didn't quite reach Utah. It's not going to be official. I might my own personal medallion. Here's Jonathan VR. How about this? You combine what he did at Round Rock before he got called up 23 home runs, 71 runs better. Than this is scary. And now what he's done at the big league level 16 home runs 49 runs better and remember a triple-a season minor league season start later in the big league seasons his totals as Joe Smith gets a strikeout his totals are 39 home runs and 120 runs batted in and we have seven weeks and a day to play in the season he's at 39 and 120 combined I and he's giving Robinson Chirinos hitting lessons. He's telling him he missed it. I'm going to sign up I'm for kidding. those hitting lessons. Yeah. What a great kid, too. I know we don't get a chance to, you know, show off that personality much. He's a little reserved with the media. But all his teammates, his manager, his coaches just rave about how much fun he is and how much they enjoy being around him. Yeah, you, I mean, it may be he's, he's reserved on camera. But I'm sure inside that clubhouse, he's got a personality that those guys are seeing. And you can see Alex Cintron chopping it up with the fellas. But wow. That's a good night to be a hitting coach. Yeah, I, inter I introduced myself to Jordan in the training room in Colorado. And just a great guy. He was just pretty laid back. He was like, nice to meet you. Had a couple of comments in Spanish that I think he appreciated and understood. Kudos to me. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. This is Rio Ruiz getting it at bat. He's pinch hitting for Trey Mancini. The Orioles might go to Stevie Wilkerson to pitch at some point. He's been used as a pitcher a few times this year, including picking up a save. Believe it or not. Orioles had a pretty good month of July. They were 12 and 12 in July. It was their first month since August of 2017, where they had a 500 or better record. But then they came into August and had to face the Yankees prior to the Astros. And Brandon Hyde has watched his bullpen and his starting rotation give up a lot of runs in this stretch and a lot of home runs. The five home runs added in tonight. That's now 239 home runs allowed. 
That's just 19 away from a major league record. But it's not a matter of whether they will set the mark, it's when. Astros had just three home runs in their four previous games against the Orioles staff, and tonight they've made up for it plus some. 20 runs, 20 hits, one man left on base. It's an absurd line. Three and two to count. It means you're finishing off innings with a home run or, in one case, a double play that scored a run. There's nobody's being left on base. That ball is driven deep to right field, and for the second straight night, the Orioles get Joe Smith for a home run. This one a pinch hit home run by Rio Ruiz. And it's now 20 to 2, and the Orioles fans have something to cheer about. That's Astro Rio Ruiz lays into one off Joe Smith. Home run number six for Rio. I'll bring up Anthony Santander. Not a frustrate Joe. He was one pitch away from getting through that inning. Ends up giving up his second earned run of the season. Santander, two hits. He had two of the three hits allowed by Aaron Sanchez. That ball's hit high in the air. Deep to right field. Springer all the way back. He's near the wall. He eases up on the track in front of the wall and makes the play for the final out of the inning. 20 to 2. We're headed to the eighth. 2020 Astro season tickets are on sale now. Enjoy great seats and exclusive benefits throughout the season at Minute Maid Park. Buy your tickets today to secure 2019 postseason tickets. For tickets and info, visit astros.com slash season tickets or call 1-877-9-ASTROS today. 20 to 2. We mentioned the last time the Astros scored 20 runs was against Arizona back in 2015. They scored 21 that day. That's the team record. So they're one off a team record as they bat in the eighth facing a new pitcher. Tom Eshelman will take over here in the eighth inning. Eshelman, a fastball slider, change up and curveball guy. Pitched Wednesday through 49 pitches in two and two thirds innings. Does not throw overly hard. He's an 85 mile an hour fastball guy. But Yuli greets him with a single in the right field. Yuli Guriel, a four hit night. Two singles, two doubles, and he lined out to center the only time he was retired. How's that scorecard looking? I'm going to need a new highlight. That is for sure. All right, guess what? The only thing they need to make it complete. A Maldonado knock. We need Martin to get a hit. He almost got hit last time, and his bat hit the baseball as he was letting go of it over his head. And he ended up grounding out. Martin, the only one in this lineup looking for a hit. Ten Astros with hits in this game, including Jake and Led Miss Diaz, who didn't start the game. Everybody on the bench wants Martin to get his, his share tonight. No, you don't want to see the Astros pile on at 20 to 2. They want to get this guy a hit. There have been five home runs in this game for the Astros so far. They have equaled 2,072 feet of home runs. That is an average of 414 feet per home run. Mm. Those aren't cheapies. The guy stretching right now added to that average. On the ground to third could be two. The second for one and the offensive night for Martin will end with a double play. That kind of helps the no left on base stat. 
Time now to reveal who that Astro is presented by Nissan. Five seasons here in Baltimore, six-time All-Star. I got to hang out with him quite a bit as an Astro. It is, of course, Miguel Tejada. One of the better teammates I've had in all my career. He was a lot of fun to play next to. Always had a great comment and never never completed a word. What? He called me blue. Miguel Tejada, Plummer's former teammate, is tonight's name that Astro. Well, the new pitcher, Stevie Wilkerson, comes in from the outfield. He'll be the new pitcher for the Orioles. This week, bases loaded. The newest Astros make history in their Minute Maid Park debut. Plus, we'll recap Hall of Fame weekend through the eyes of some Astros legends. All that and more this week on Astros Bases Loaded, only on AT&T Sportsnet. Again. All right, Julia, new pitcher is a position player, Stevie Wilkerson, who has pitched for the fourth time this season. Picked up a save earlier this year by dropping in pitches of that speed. He became the first position player ever in the history of the major league since saves became a stat in 69 to record a save. And he gets Josh Reddick to pop one up. Rio Ruiz makes the play, and we're going to head to the bottom of the eighth in this 20 to 2 game. Grab your friends, lace up your shoes, and join the Astros Foundation and Houston Police Department for the annual Badges and Bases H Town Rundown presented by Shamir. A family friendly 5K and 10K run will take place this Saturday, September 28th, with proceeds benefiting both organizations. To register, visit Astros.com slash run. That's not this Saturday, but September 28th. Mark your calendars. You guys got time. Get those times down. How about you? We're always on the road for yeah, this. We're gone. We always miss this. But in terms of getting your times down, I would say you've got the best shot of the three of us. Oh. Easily. And if you're on a morning run, you might pass this guy, Chris Davinsky. Yeah, but I'm I'm the power. I hit the home runs. Yep. Julia is the runner. She sets yep. great times. TK, what are you bringing? Tangibles. <laughs> <laughs> you are of, the X factor. A lot of intangibles. <laughs> that was well done. Yeah, he knew where I was going with that one. But Devo, we've seen him on our early morning golf outings. Oh man, yeah. He's out there on his morning runs. Dawn Patrol. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like seriously, we'll get in after a night game, and this guy's back out there running at six in the morning whenever the sun comes up. Devo's the new pitcher in the eighth inning. Devo's been pretty good of late. Getting some work here in this ball game that he's not accustomed to being in. He's been in some tight situations in recent days, but here a little bit different story. Facing Richie Martin. Devo pitched against Colorado on the sixth. Gave up a run, but he's still qualified for a hold. Ground ball to third. I'll let Miss Diaz. He's got a good arm. Makes the play across for the first half. Our best in Texas power pitcher is presented by your local Ford dealers. And how about that bullpen? This is not a close and late situation, but we saw that last night where it was a tight ball game and they needed to rely on that bullpen. But how about from the seventh inning on? That Astros bullpen is the best in Major League Baseball with a 3.03 ERA and a 202 opponent batting average. And that's the way that Jeff Luno wanted it to set up because this offense isn't going to be able to go out there every single night and crank out 21 hits and 20 runs. Had to use them last night. This offense continues to pour it on during this winning streak. They scored seven against Cleveland to start this streak and then 22 and three games against the Mariners including a 10 run game and a nine run game. Then 25 in two games against the Rockies, and now 23 in two games against the Orioles. So when they extend this winning streak to eight games, they'll have scored 77 runs. Plus, if they add anything in the ninth inning, that's almost 10 runs a game during this winning streak. Devo picks up a strikeout. Seems legit, TK. <laughs> it is. It is definitely too legit to quit. Oh, yeah. Julia has so much juice that last night in the 1989 celebration of the Baltimore Orioles Why Not team, 
They're playing music from the 1989 music charts. And Julie was mentioning MC Hammer. Next thing you know, MC Hammer's playing Camden Yards in Baltimore. She has some pull. Mad pull. I think it's just a matter of time before that MC Hammer Julia connection in Oakland. We wrap up this road trip. Chance Cisco bats with a one on one count. You're not going to believe what's happening in this stroke pull. Huh? We're going to re reveal the results next half. <laughs> this, <laughs> Was there a strong late surge by a certain Jordan? A huge surge. <laughs> Nolan Ryan, the Express, had a comfortable lead before this game started. And Devo, with two strikeouts, gets through a 1 2 3 8. Astros will bat in the ninth, top of the order. We welcome you back, Astros Penny, tonight. Last time they put up at least 19 runs was back in 2017, a very special year. That offense was coming alive right before the All Star break. Put up 19 runs at Rogers Center against the Blue Jays. It was July 9th. Saw Carlos Correa there. He actually hit two home runs that day. There's a couple things I remember about this. Plumber, you might, you might remember this too. One being a, just the, the offensive explosion we saw. Carlos Correa's big day is something I won't forget. I was actually able to talk to him after that game. But there was a certain pick to click that I had uh, put out there. Really put myself out there with a certain player, Carlos Beltran. I thought he was going to have a big day. He was the one guy that didn't get a hit. <laughs> I've never been more wrong at anything in my entire life. <laughs> Do you remember that? We, I don't even know why we decided to pick a player that day, but we did. We did. And you picked the only, oh, this is a pop up foul. Thing. Stevie Wilkerson was looked like he was playing center field off the pitcher's mat. But yeah, you picked the only guy, Julia, and a DH at that, <laughs> who did not have a hit. I was I was feeling Beltron that day. I thought that was going to be his day. Oh my goodness, I was so wrong. He didn't it, pick Martin tonight, right? No, I didn't. Okay. I've I have retired from pick to click. I have to play again. After that. It was so embarrassing. Why did I decide? It, it was a day game, day before the All Star break. One of those fun games where I'm just having some fun. I think before the game, but man. <laughs> hey, stay you, humble. You have uh, a lot of choices for your post game interview. I do. You have a lot this of This is difficult, yes. Yeah. Stevie uh, Wilkerson's thrown up. I could think of one. <laughs> Ground ball to third. Springer retired. George will end his night one for four. And still the only man left on base all night was Springer when he doubled back in the fifth inning with two outs and was stranded. One man left on base, 20 runs scored. So you're thinking the guy who is right now and we're not going to reveal the results of our stroke poll till the next half inning. Right now, in a heated battle with Nolan Ryan, the Express, neither one individually has ever lost a stroke poll other than the nickname poll. Altuve keeps one fair down the left field line. And Altuve is going to get to second base with his third hit of the game, a single home run, and now a double. But Jordan and Nolan Ryan, when this game started, it was 53-47. Basically, the poll was, who's the king of the mountain? Neither one had lost a stroke <laughs> poll. It was 53-47, Nolan. Jordan has two home runs, his first career grand slam, five RBIs. He now has more RBIs in 45 games than anybody in the history of the major leagues. Did the same after 30 games. And he has somehow caught the Ryan Express in our stroke poll. Jake Marisnik deep to center field, bidding for a new Astros record. If that ball went another five feet, the Astros would have set a new record for runs scored. Said it's a deep flyout. You show off your quick moves by getting to Minute Maid Park early on Saturday, August 24th. 15,000 fans will receive an exclusive Colin McHugh dodging bobblehead presented by Germania Insurance to highlight his super speedy reaction earlier this season. For tickets and info, visit astros.com slash promotions. And we'll see Colin McHugh pitch the next inning for the Astros. As Aledmus Diaz takes a strike. Are these pitches registering? 51 miles an hour. 51. Yeah. They're, they're called gravity balls. There's a base hit. The Astros will tie their franchise record for runs scored. 
21 runs matching a team record set in Arizona at the end of the 2015 season. Guess who's coming up? And Cordon Alvarez comes to the plate. October 2, 2015, 21 to 5 at Chase Field in Arizona was the Astros' record before tonight. And now it's been matched with a 21 run outburst tonight. And Jordan Alvarez at the plate. Jordan! Are you kidding me? This one bounces in front of Utah Street. His third home run. He has seven runs batted in. The Astros set a new franchise record. They have now scored 23 runs. This guy is unbelievable. Oh, your does he ever. A three home run night. And seven runs batted in. He is by himself going to take over this rookie of the year balloting. He's going to catch all the guys that have been around all season. Yeah, he is the your monger. He may give a curtain call in a visiting stadium. A new franchise record. 23 runs. And he's not even sweating. Three home runs. That's a cool customer right there. Seven RBIs. We're not that far from the move from Yuli getting eight in one game. This is stuff in the birthplace of Babe Ruth that the Bambino would be proud of. Great call. Great call. There's a ball rocketed to left field. Correa with a single. Oh, by the way, Carlos has a three hit night and a couple of RBIs. How about the number four spot in the Astros lineup today? <laughs> it's been a pretty good, pretty good evening, hasn't it? They have not gotten out. Six for six in the four spot, setting the table for Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> six for six with five runs scored between Bregman and Diaz. Here's Yuli. Yuli has four hits. Oh, by the way, the secondary story of the night is this guy could have a five-hit night. He could do something his buddy Altuve's never done. There are five hitters in this lineup with three or more hits. Five. It's 25 hits in the game, Todd. Yuli will not get a five-hit night as Wilkerson gets through the inning. But the Astros set a record, and if there was a night that Jordan Alvarez put an exclamation point on his Rookie of the Year candidacy, it is tonight. 23 to 2. Houston Astros baseball on AT&T Sportsnet is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. The power player is brought to you by TXU Energy. And yes, it is Jordan Alvarez who was showing off the power early in this one in the first inning. Got his first home run of the night. Dugout loved that one. Astros putting it on the Orioles early, but then followed that one up. With another deep shot. This one a grand slam. His first career grand slam tonight. Gave the Astros a 20 to 1 lead at the time, but he was not done in the ninth. Three home runs for Jordan this evening. That's 15, 16, and 17 for him. Seven RBI. My, my, my. What did we witness tonight, guys? We've witnessed a guy who should be everyone's favorite soon to win Rookie of the Year. And he eclipsed a stat we already put out there. 49 RBIs in 45 games, and he goes out there and hits a two-run jack. Now we're at 51. He's got 122 RBIs in this 2019 season between the majors and minors. We're going to reveal the stroke poll results after this batter, and we've had over 4,000 votes. Last I heard, it was over 4,200. Thank you everybody for watching this ball game and voting because that's incredible. It's got to be a record. It is a new record by far. And Nolan Ryan led 30, 53 to 47 percent before the game started. And it's time to reveal the results of our most anticipated ever Chevy Stroll poll. 
Nolan's never lost a stroke pole, but tonight, Jordan Alvarez wins the stroke pole over the legend, the Love Express. Boy. Slow clap. Well took, done. took three home runs and seven <laughs> RBIs to dethrone Nolan. I think you're right, though, about Julia's guest. Yeah, I don't think they're a choice now. Don't leave. Jordan, don't leave. Yep, stay with Don't late. leave. Hope. He's going to get Oz. <laughs> Translator. Don't leave. So with that, with the 51 RBIs, he's vaulted himself in front of Altuve, who had three RBIs in this game to get to 50. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I haven't said much about Colin McHugh, but he's got a chance to finish off this game with a 1-2-3 inning, getting the first two batters, and now facing the opposing pitcher, if you will, Stevie Wilkerson. Started the night in center field and recorded four outs, but gave up three runs along the way. 23 to 2 record setting night for the Astros. Make sure to stay tuned after the game for the Astros post game show presented by Whataburger. A lot to talk about tonight. A career night for Jordan, a record setting night for the Astros, eclipsing 21 runs scored in 2015. Julia will get a lot of interviews tonight. That's all coming up on the Astros post game show presented by Whataburger. Bart Ennis and Mike Stanton will host. In that 21 run game, Altuve played in that game, Correa played in that game, Springer played in that game, Jonathan Villar played for the Astros in that game. Jake Marisnik part of that game as well. Colin wanted that 1 2 pitch call to end the game, but Bill Welke says maybe a little low. It's 2 and 2. My goodness, Jordan Alvarez. Have yourself a season and have yourself 45 games to start a career. Colin McHugh, a 1 2 3 9. And the Astros wrap up a 23 2 whitewashing of the Baltimore Orioles. They extend their winning streak to eight games. And Jordan Alvarez has himself a career night in his 45th Major League game. Anything else to add, Blummer? Historic in every sense of the word with the run scored the three home runs. As much as we've been impressed with how Jordan has played, he continues to amaze us. Ball club's a lot of fun to watch. Tonight we saw them firing on every single cylinder. They are averaging 10 runs a game during this eight game winning streak. The best record in baseball, the Houston Astros will have plenty more coming up after this.